100,000 people marched in the UK capital um, the past weekend to protest uh, the Israel airstrikes against Gaza. At least 212 people, um, uh, including 61 children, have been killed by Israel strikes in Gaza since the violence started over a week ago. 12 people in Israel have died after rockets were fired into Israel by uh, Palestinian militants uh, in Gaza. Now, here's a quote, okay, uh, in reference to this cop that's catching heat for showing some support, showing some love. So <clears throat> we police hundreds of events and protests every year and officers must remain independent and impartial in carrying out their duties, end quote. New quote, the uh, Directorate of Professional Standards has been informed and are fully investigating the circumstances of this incident and to determine what further action is appropriate, end quote. New quote, while officers are encouraged to positively to positively engage with those attending demonstrations, they know, they know that they are not actively participating or adapting any political positions, end quote, new quote. This is vital to ensuring the public, to ensuring that the public has confidence in their officers, end quote. That, that right there, see that, that last quote? Yeah. That's that's the money shot. That's the eh. that's the money shot. <laughs> I, I, I I understand, you know, especially if you're from one of these countries or you have family there. I get like why you'd be very even just being human. Just being human. I understand. I do. But you're a cop. You have to remain impartial. You know what I'm saying? What are your thoughts on this? I mean, I don't even see what the, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. The, the, it's as simple as a hug. It was an embrace. She gave an embrace to somebody who was a protester. It's not like she had a, or had a sign up and was, 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 was saying, you know, down with Israel or whatever. She wasn't chanting anything or anything like that. It was a simple action to a protester. And at the end of the day, the, the, the police officer's job is to maintain the peace. So if maintaining the peace, maybe she went above and beyond. Maybe she didn't have to do that, but she felt like she did in that situation you know what i mean we don't know the circumstances of why she felt like she needed to do that this was a protest with with hundreds maybe thousands of people in london and she, there was one person that she interacted with so i don't see how they're gonna blow this up and make this a thing now, now it's political and they gotta investigate and and do all this you're taking it too far man she's not making no political statement at all she's just being human it's, it's being human you could be right, but let me ask you this question. Um, you're black. He's black. Last time I checked, last time I checked, yeah, yeah. This guy knows what he's talking about. He sees it. Do you think, from, you know, life experience, do you think police favor people of our skin tone? Uh, no. Okay, leave it there. Do you think police favor people of the Caucasian descent? Life experience. You don't have to be right or wrong. Your own experience. Do you think they do? Yeah. Most so times. The reason why I'm saying that is because can you imagine can you imagine for a second the cops at the riot? Well, the insurrection, right? January 6th. This was a clear example of that. The police at BLM rallies Versus the insurrection, which was predominantly white. You can see how they interact with the people differently. The cops need to be non-biased, period. So the fact that you, just through life experience, already think in your mind that because you're a different skin color, if you call the cops or if you sound black or if you have an interaction with the cop, you're going to be treated differently because of your skin color is wrong. So a cop being at one of these protests, showing love, being human, if there's other people there or people just watching through social media, they already think, oh, okay, so because I'm not of that, they have something against me. Even though it was one cop, that's all it takes, my nigga, one. That's all it takes. So that's why you have to remain as neutral as possible because once one cop is a bad apple, the whole bunch is ruined. And you can't tell me I'm wrong on that because you know how you feel about the po-po. And you've not right. met every single police officer in the entire world and you still have the exact same stance on cops like I do.
right? So this is why being a cop is straight, 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 nigga. Can't detour none of that shit. Everything, everything you're talking about is, is perception of other people. Everything you're talking about is perception of other people. The action doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that's what it means. It's just an action. If people want to perceive it to be what you said that they want to perceive it to be, that this person supports them because he decided to hug somebody who was a protester or she hugged somebody that was a protester, then that's on them. That's, but guess what? That's on them. But I, don't, I don't understand why the police force feels like they need to, to step down and investigate and I hope the investigation comes to find out that the person was just being compassionate to another human being. I hope so too. I hope so that's too. Happened. I hope so too. But guess what? Optics. That's, that's, that's the word I want to leave you with. Because you said it's about my perception. You're damn right it is. It's also about the other people's perception who watched it too. Optics. Optics is the word of the day, people. He don't think it's a big deal. I do. What do you think? <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that the uh, that description box. Deuces. Joe Rogan said straight white men are being silenced by woke culture. Hit you guys with some quotes. <sighs> Open quote. Can you make a good comedy movie anymore? Or have they made it so dangerous in terms of being canceled that comedy movies are no longer something you can do? End quote. Good question. Uh, new quote, you can never be woken up. That's the problem, end quote, new quote. It keeps going, it keeps going further and further and further down the line. And if you get to the point where you capulate, where you agree to all these demands, it'll eventually get to straight white men are not allowed to talk because you're privileged to express yourself when other people of color have been silenced throughout history, end quote, new quote. We just gotta be nice to each other, man. And there's a lot of people that are taking advantage of this weirdness in our culture. And then that becomes their thing. That uh, Their thing is calling people out for their privilege, calling people out for their position. End quote, new quote. It's fucking crazy times, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing- That's a good final quote. <laughs> I love doing these quotes, it's funny. Especially Joe Rogan quotes. Um, look, straight to the point, <laughs> he has some gems in there, man. People are way too sensitive. Um, one of my favorite stand-up comedies is Delirious, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Eddie Murphy, there's no network where that could ever be aired. No dis a distribution company would ever pick that up. It would just never come out. Ever. Period. The internet wouldn't even, the, the dark web wouldn't even allow that. You understand me? <laughs> like, people are so sensitive today. It just wouldn't happen. So I agree with Joe Rogan. Like, we're losing a lot of great shit here and you're stifling a lot of creativity. Jokes, people. They're just jokes. Are straight white men being silenced by woke culture? Let me... Look, I, I, I'm not going to speak to the straight part. But I mean, I guess it all plays a factor. So fine, whatever. You know, there are some states in America where they've made it illegal to get an abortion. Now, I want to be clear about this. The people who are making these decisions for a woman, because a man can't get an abortion. You guessed it, straight white men. So do they need to shut the fuck up? In some cases, yes. In some cases, absolutely yes. Shut the fuck up forever. Yeah, of course, 100%. Agree. Thoughts? Uh, I don't even know what to add on to all of that because pretty much what you said is, is, is pretty much what, what I'm thinking. You covered all points right there. Like, you know, woke culture is just something that is a little bit strange. I feel like people take it a little bit too far as they do with most things. And then as far as what uh, Joe Rogan said, you know, it's he's sitting on a the, 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 the backlash that he's catching is because he's sitting on a podcast right now that has millions of listeners and he's getting hundreds of millions of dollars and he's talking about being silenced as a white man. So it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense the, that he's saying it, maybe, you know, but he's been saying a lot of dumb shit lately. So I don't really I don't really know what's going on with Joe if he's just trying to go viral and see how long he can keep saying dumb shit for people to pay attention to. But uh, newsflash, Joe, you don't, you don't need to go viral, man. <laughs> you, know? you, you are viral. Know? 
<laughs> you're averaging about 11 million listeners per episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're, you're all right. You reach. I mean, you can tell a little bit. Maybe it's how he feels, and you know, I guess he's got his right. But people are just gonna laugh at it, you know. But hey, um, uh, viewing public, what are your thoughts on this, man? I mean, you know, actually, this this be more direct. I want to hear from the straight white guys. Do you feel like you're being silenced? <laughs> Do you feel like your voice is lost? Nobody wants to hear you. Seriously, and I say this with a smirk and sarcastically. But I'm right. curious. I want to know how you feel about this. Is Joe talking shit, or is he standing up for you, the downtrodden, underprivileged, <laughs> looked over, straight white? Man. Leave it in the comments, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that description box. We got goodies. Deuces. So this is crazy. Um, first of its of its kind. You know, we love those gems, those jewels. The uh, Basketball Hall of Fame ceremony just recently happened. And, you know, Kobe, there was a speech with Vanessa Bryant and Michael Jordan that's going viral. Uh, Kevin Garnett was an inductee. We all know who got inducted if you're into Basketball Hall of Fame. It's a prestigious, prestigious, prestigious place. It's not like other Hall of Fames where they pretty much would let in anybody who's played the game and was considered a superstar <coughs> NFL. Uh, but there's 400 of the 50 years, there's only 400 people that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame, and one of the newest inductees has never even played in an NBA basketball game. And he's from the great city of Toronto. That's right, Toronto, stand up. I oh, will. Nav. Yeah, dust off the shoulders a little bit. Give yourself a little, yeah, give yourself a little pride because we keep killing the basketball game. First, we have the greatest dunker in NBA. And now we have the first fan ever, 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 ever inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, Nav Batia, the super fan. And this is not the 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 Hall of Fans, because lots of these places have, have halls of fans, believe it or not. There's Hall of Fans <laughs> for fans. I know. I know I'll catch you off guard with that one. It's not one of those. This is the actual basketball hall of fame and they chose to to uh commemorate this with some of his prestigious prestigious items that he's garnered over the years and one of the things that i think is pretty cool is his turban is one of the things that's on display but what do you think about this you think of all the this is 50 years of basketball and i know you don't know sports a lot you know but you i don't know, know why you keep telling everybody that stop you know saying that, that shit <laughs> <laughs> stop saying that shit I know it irks you. I know you do shit to irk me. I know that irks you. That's so I get, true. I get, right, I get my enough, little thrills. I get uh, my little thrills. Look, man, at the end of the day, I think this is great. I think this is a great thing. Because, yeah, I get it. You know, it's very difficult to get into the NBA Hall of Fame. <laughs> and not play one game. Not, <laughs> a lot of people, Bang. I could imagine, be they're very <laughs> pissed off at this. You know, but but we keep pissing off the NBA, so let's add another <laughs> notch on the belt. But anyway, let, no, man, this guy has done so many great things. So many great things for Toronto. For Toronto. And he's done a lot of great things for the NBA, as far as I know. I don't think so. But he's done tons of great things for Toronto, for the youth in Toronto. So, yes, does he deserve to be in the NBA Hall of Fame? Fuck no. But... Because he's in the NBA Hall of Fame, I am going to back it until I die, and I'm going to find any reason why he should be in the, in the NBA Hall of Fame. He's been at pretty much every single Raptors game. That's a dedicated fan. He's he's taken underprivileged kids to Raptors games. That's a dedicated fan. That's a man who's trying to make a change in young people's lives. Weren't you just saying LeBron James and Tom Brady, they were making changes in young, you know, people in, in underprivileged right. neighborhoods looking up to them. He's doing, he's doing it for real. He's doing it for real. So hell yes, he deserves to be in the NBA Hall of Fame over some of these incredible basketball players who've been playing for years and years and years and he's never played a game. You damn straight. No, that's my nigga, man. Which I'm sorry. Listen, I know listen, this guy doesn't know a lot about sports. I don't say that, that often. You know what I mean? But no, no. <laughs> this, is, this is the thing. If you think about it, I want you to think about it this way. He's been at every Raptors home game 
since 1995. That's 26 years, let's say 41 games a year. He's been at every... He's actually been in more games than some NBA players. His career has lasted longer than any other NBA player. I'm giving you stats that we got to think about, people. I'm giving you stats. If you want to talk about Iron Man, no NBA player has ever been at every single home game. You know what I'm saying? So some of them were not there for that were absent, were sick, were away, surgeries. You know what I mean? These are stats that these are Iron Man stats. He earned his right. And I think it's hilarious that another one of the things that they chose to commemorate him with was the courtside seat that he sat in for all of those years, which <laughs> I'm saying to myself, in, what is he sitting in now? What is he, what is he sitting in? <laughs> Does he stand for the Does he just have to stand for the rest of the games now? <laughs> like, Yo, the other thing, too, to remember is Jackie Chan, he won an Oscar. He didn't did, win an Oscar for just some role, some great movie he did. They gave him an honorary Oscar. Oh, I didn't. I I didn't even know that. Yes, I didn't even know that. So if he can get an honorary Oscar, the nigga from Rumble <laughs> in the Bronx, <laughs> an honorary Oscar was that like a fucking participation ribbon? That's exactly what it was. <laughs> I don't see why we can't get the homie in the NBA Hall of Fame. All you niggas is mad. You just angry that that Toronto you know won the championship game. <laughs> I, I see the hate written all over your face, man. Mad. <laughs> That's not right, man. Greatest dunker, greatest dunker, greatest uh, NBA championship team of all time. We have uh, one one of the biggest. We have the biggest fan now commemorated, honored, enshrined. You know what I mean? And we have Drake. <laughs> <laughs> throw that in there. You just you got to. If you mention Toronto, you just got to throw that we in there. We have Drake. Yeah. <laughs> Viewing public, what are your thoughts, man? Y'all big mad? <laughs> Y'all big mad about this? Don't be big, man. He's doing big things for the kids, for the, for the youth in Toronto. What have you done lately for the youth? Any youth. Even your own kids. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> have they eaten? Have they eaten yet? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in the comments, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We got goodies in the description box. Deuces. Yes, sir. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Yo, 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 Chris, 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 we got to 200 subscribers, Finally. man. Finally. You know what I'm saying? But we don't want to stop there. We have a new goal. The new goal is 500 subscribers. So what I need you to do, I need you to like these videos over here. I need you to subscribe right here, man. Two guys doing the podcast podcast, man.